Welcome back to my 1.6 playthrough of Stardew Valley. Today we're playing the entirety of summer, starting with the regular first of the month tasks. I started putting down the speed grow I had because I knew if I didn't put it down now, I probably wouldn't ever. I then placed down the seeds I had collected over spring and cut down a bunch of weeds to collect some hay for my silo. I also found a new flower mixed seed, which I haven't seen before. I then picked up my steel pickaxe at Clint's and fished my first rainbow trout in the town river. I went to pick up my iridium rod at Willy's and fished for a gold tuna in the ocean because I needed the quality fish for the community center. I checked the calendar and saw that there was a new trout derby. I donated both the quality and the regular tuna to the community center along with the cockle finishing the crab pot bundle. I also donated some ice cream I'd bought at Alex's ice cream shop. I fished in the mountain lake until late at night and gave some frozen geodes to my fish pond the next morning. I also fished for a gold star shad and a pike in the town river. The next morning I went to Piers to buy a bunch of summer seeds to plant on my farm and I dug up some new spots to plant them down and left some spaces for sprinklers. Since it was raining I went to the ocean to catch a red snapper which I sadly didn't get but I reached level 7 fishing. On day 31 I planted some new crops and took care of my animals which I as usual forgot about and I collected all of the eggs they had been laying. I ran over to the community center to donate these eggs along with a cookie I found in a trash and a grape and sweet pea to finish the summer foraging bundle. I fished some more in the ocean as well as cinder sap forest and went over to the secret forest to cut down some hardwood and collect some fiddlehead fern where I got this relic shirt from a slime. I caught a wood skip in the tiny lake and finally unlocked level 7 farming, unlocking the recipe for the quality sprinkler. Day 32 started planting some new crops and checking my bat cave for the first time, which didn't have anything too exciting but a cherry, which was pretty cool. I went to the mines where I got an entire gold bar and this new mystery box from a mob and finally reached level 100, gaining my first star drop. Back home I smelted some of the ore I had collected and crafted some new sprinklers for my farm, which would definitely make my mornings easier from now on. I got this woody secret book from cutting down some trees on my farm, which gave me a 5% chance to get double wood. I also bought a cow at Marnie's and randomized the name till I found one I liked. I went to Marnie's shop to also buy one of the milk buckets. And when I scrolled down, I found out that she had cat trees, which I was definitely going to save up for. Back on my farm, I also finally found some moss, which looked really, really cool on the new trees. I think I like it most on the acorn trees, though. I went to Clint's to open up the mystery box, which, well, was not that exciting. So I also opened some geodes I had left and donated the minerals I found in it to the museum. I donated some moss, a cherry, and a red mushroom to the community center and went home taking care of my cow. I spent the rest of the day in the mines collecting some ore and working on my combat skill. I went back the next day working on my combat skill before going to town and collecting more moss. I rearranged my room with some of the posters I got from the museum as reward. And I also crafted my first tapper, which I put on one of the trees on my farm. I spent the rest of day 34 recycling some broken CDs. On day 35, I had my first summer harvest with some summer squash and some hot peppers, which I immediately donated to the community center. And of course, the one time I actually catch the train, it's a Joja Mart train, which doesn't drop anything, sadly. I gave Caroline a red mullet for one of her quests, which gave me a prize ticket, which I traded for three mystery boxes at Lewis's which meant I was one ticket closer to this new tea looking thing. I spent some time fishing in the mountain lake and in the town river and sold all of my fish back home, reaching level eight fishing and unlocking the deluxe worm bin recipe. On day 36, I went back to Clint's to open up more mystery boxes, which were definitely a lot better than the first one. I spent a lot of my energy cutting down trees and clearing my farm and went to the ocean to catch a red snapper. I stayed fishing at the ocean to also catch some new summer fish and went to Gus Saloon to buy most of the recipes there except for the triple shot espresso which I didn't have enough money anymore. I donated the red snapper to the community center as well as a blackberry and I went back home to get a tilapia because I knew I had it in a chest. I unlocked level 6 foraging, finally getting the recipe for lightning rods. 
So I crafted one on day 37 and put it down so the lightning could stop ruining my crops. I wanted to put a salmon berry into a preserve jar and accidentally gifted it to Robin who was working on my house. So I put another one in the preserves jar to get some wine for the shipping collection. I went to the mines to collect some more iron and finish the quest for the wizard, which I went to visit straight after, collecting all of the moss on my way. Waking up to an upgraded house, I started my morning of day 38 rearranging my furniture and came outside to another big harvest. Mayor Lewis gave me 500 gold for being the best neighbor ever and gifting a strawberry to Maru gave me a new friend achievement. I rearranged my chest because now I had a lot more space inside of the house. I also set up my space for the workbench. If you haven't used the workbench before, it is such a great help for crafting and after discovering it, I'm never going back. I crafted this new mushroom lock because I wanted to see what it did and it said it growed best next to trees so I put it in a corner of my farm where most of the trees were still grown. I also put down a few more lightning rods to protect my farm before going back to bed. The next morning Emily waited for me and gave me access to her sewing machine and a bunch of coffee and my melons were finally ready on day 39. I got a pop-up for a luau which I otherwise would have forgotten about so I went inside to check what I had to put into the soup. At the luau I talked to all of the villagers as usual and went to the soup to add my gold quality tuna. The governor liked it but didn't seem too excited about it. Day 40 started getting my first jar of milk and the bookseller was in town again which had a new menu where I thought, oh wait, this is so cool, I can buy a book for 100 wood? Not realizing that he sold the items to me for the books. If I was able to read, I would have known that before, but instead I went back home like an idiot, got some wood and was very disappointed. So I went to the community center instead to donate a melon and some jelly. I went to the mines reaching level 105, which gave me mining level 6 and level 5 combat where I chose the fighter profession. Day 31 was a rainy day again, which I had a lot of in summer, so I harvested my crops and was determined to go to the mines to reach the bottom. I got the slammer on floor 110 and my energy was so low on 119 that I started crafting bombs but I made it to level 120 getting the skull key. I finished the summer crops bundle and donated some quality hot peppers to the community center, reaching level 7 farming. Day 42 started collecting some batteries and removing the lightning rods to have more space to farm. I went to the traveling cart who sold a retro catalog which meant there was new furniture in this update as well. I also cut down some hardwood stumps in the secret forest and bought another cow for my farm. I went to Pierre's finally finishing upgrading my backpack and went back to the mines to collect some ore and work on my combat skill. I gave Clint the copper he requested and sorted all of my stuff back home where I realized I had an ancient seed in my inventory. I planted some of the hops I needed for Pam's quest and some other random seeds I found on the way and put some more ore in the furnace before going to bed. Day 43 started harvesting some more crops and going to Clint's opening geodes which I donated to the museum along with the ancient seed giving me the ancient seed recipe and one seed packet. I wanted to donate the wheat flour to the community center where I needed 100 instead of 10 which I didn't know so I instead donated a sunflower and some maple syrup. I spent my day fishing at the mountain lake and giving Maru a carp for another prize ticket. I finished the lake fish bundle with a sturgeon and spent the rest of my night fishing in the ocean. Day 44 started harvesting my first corn and checking my bat cave I had forgotten about again, which had both an orange and an apricot, which is amazing. I gave a grape to Marnie for a quest and bought the rest of the wheat I needed at Pierre's. I donated both of the fruit tree fruits to the community center along with the corn and the 100 wheat flour and brought the prize ticket to Lewis to finally get the star drop tea, a special gift that everyone enjoys, which I haven't found out what it means yet. I spent the rest of my energy clearing my farm from some more trees and crafted the deluxe worm bin for the first time. I did a little more mining around midnight, reaching level 7 mining. On day 45 I picked up my copper hoe at Clint's, donated the squid ink to the community center and again didn't have the right amount to donate something else, so I donated a blueberry to the dye bundle and went fishing in the ocean, as well as the town river. I sold most of the fish back home. On day 46, I found a trash catalog and trash can outside the museum and bought the fish smoker recipe at Willie's. I went to the mines to find the cave jelly I still needed for the recipe, and when I didn't reel up any on floor 60, I went to floor 100. 
but I didn't get too lucky so I had to go back home. Day 47 started with a huge harvest of crops, which I sold most of for profit. I also cut down some of the long grass because in this update you are significantly slower in it. And I found some purple mushrooms on the mushroom log I had forgotten about. I placed down the trash catalog to check what was inside and, well, it was trashy. <laughs> So I went to the community center finishing the exotic foraging bundle. I gave Demetrius a melon for his birthday and went straight back to the mines to find some jelly, getting a lot more lucky this time. Back home I crafted the fish smoker and put in some fish I had two of so I could check how much more profit it will make. I gave Clint the ores he had collected and when going to bed I saw that the fish smoker almost doubled the price, which is really really good. I gave Demetrius another melon for a quest and on day 48 I finally found out what the trout derby was. So apparently you fish up rainbow trout and you have a chance of them having a golden tag which you can exchange for prizes. I did get a bunch of rainbow trout and a chest with an iridium band and a mystery box, but I sadly didn't get any golden tags, which I don't know if I'm just really unlucky or if the chance is just really really low to get any. I did reach level 9 fishing though. Day 49 started with a regular harvest where I also got some of the summer forageables and my second new cow was ready to produce milk as well. I also cut down the fences which were starting to break down and I didn't really care if the chicken ran around my farm. I ate a sea jelly to improve my fishing and a lucky lunch which I'm happy I ate second because it replaced the buff of the sea jelly. But now I had plus 3 luck which would definitely give me a lot more golden tags. I got the first one from a chest which I thought was just the way you caught them but shortly after I got another golden tag without a treasure chest. I ended my day with only 4 tags, which I don't know if it's a lot or not, but y'all can tell me how many you got on your first trout derby. I got rewarded with a new tent kit, a bucket hat, a crab pot, and a mystery box, which are pretty underwhelming results for the amount of time I spent here. So I went back home, storing all of my items and going to bed. I opened the geodes and mystery boxes I had the next day at Clint's and exchanged the prize ticket for a blue stripe bed. I finished the home cooks bundle with some milk, upgraded my barn, and got a really lucky treasure chest on day 50. I also went to the mines to work on my combat skill, reaching level 8 farming and finally leveling up my combat. Day 51 was a strange day, waking up to this pop-up that a green rain has descended upon the valley. And when I came outside, my entire farm was overgrown with weeds. I cut them down not only getting fiber but also moss which was really exciting because otherwise it was really annoying to collect. Gus sent me a letter that I could come to the saloon to take shelter and when I went to sell my crops in the shipping bin, I saw that I had a mossy seed in my inventory which was also new. My cows seemed fine, they even gave me milk which I was happy about so I went around my farm cutting down more of the weeds. I also cut down all of these weird trees that grew around the valley which were just regular trees dropping wood. Most of the town was gathered in Gus Saloon and they all seemed slightly concerned. I did find this weird looking tree which dropped fiddlehead fern which was also nice to see. Coming to the mountains, I found Demetrius in a hazmat suit, which made me worry if my choice of clothing was the best for today. Demetrius' family was gathered in the basement and talking to Sebastian, he was the only one that wasn't freaking out. I went through cinder sap forest, cutting down more of the weird trees and weeds. And there was a bunch in cinder sap forest. I made sure to cut down all of these fiddlehead fern logs, because fiddlehead fern is usually a little annoying to collect. I tried to use most of my day to collect as much moss as I could and placed down the tent kit because I wanted to see what it did. I reached level 7 foraging that day. On day 52 I woke up in the exact same space I went to sleep in which I think is a great new addition. I went to the museum to donate a bone from the mines and also upgraded my hoe at Clint's. I finally had enough road to donate to the museum and finish the fish farmers bundle and also donated 5 quality crops finishing that bundle as well. At home I crafted a cheese press and a keg for the first time and fished next to Willy in this bubble spot until it got dark. At home I grabbed some cheese from the cheese press, replaced it with some milk and placed some tappers on some of the public trees because otherwise I usually just forget about my tappers. I made a bunch of money from the fish smoker which I really really like and harvested some ripe hops which I placed into the keg for some pale ale I needed for Pam. I also placed some crab pots into my farm river and gave George a hot pepper for one of his quests. 
I donated the cheese to the museum and gave a largemouth bass to Emily for a quest. Bought my first goat at Marnie's, and every time I scroll through my animal list, I have to laugh seeing its name. Talking to Marnie after that gave me enough friendship points to finally pick up the lucky shorts, which I gave to Louis who was waiting in town for me. I unlocked the 10k vault bundle for a lightning rod, the 5k one for some quality fertilizer, and the 2.5k for some chocolate cake. I also went through all of my stuff, checking the shipping collection and what I still needed to ship, and used the rest of my energy for cutting down trees on my farm. I went to Clint's on day 55, collecting my steel hoe, and went to the mines, collecting some gold, getting mystery boxes from crates, and working on my combat level, where I got a yellow scroll, which I could donate to the museum to unlock talking to the dwarf. I collected the rewards that happened collecting there and went back to the mines where I got another new seed for fall, the broccoli seeds. I also used a bomb to access the dwarf who had a new book that would help me get less damage from bombs. After bringing all of my stuff home, I went to Pam to give her her pale ale and donated an apple to the community center, finishing the artisan bundle and giving me a keg. I put down my new museum furniture before going to bed. Mystery boxes and geodes were opened on day 55 and I collected some stone for a quest in the mines. Going to my cave that had a pomegranate, which I think meant that I had gotten all of the fruit tree fruits from the bat cave by now. The green rain trees had turned into regular trees, so I cut down some of them in the backwoods and on my farm. The last day of summer, I started harvesting all of my crops, and I really wanted to finish the vault before summer ended, so I sold a bunch of stuff directly to Piers, which wasn't enough to reach 25k, so I went to Clint's to sell him more minerals which put me past that mark by a lot. I sold the rest of the items I've gotten from home for some extra cash and then finally unlocked the vault, giving myself a crystallarium and the second star on the board. I collected some beer from a keg that had been processing and put in a salmon berry to get some wine for my shipping collection. I placed the crystallarium and put a diamond inside and spent the rest of my energy on clearing my farm from the green rain trees. I then finally went to the ocean to talk to all of the villagers which had been collecting there for the dance of the moonlight jelly. And when I got home to go to bed, I watched the Junimos finish repairing the bus stop for me. Thank you so much for watching. I know I don't upload too frequently, so I'm beyond grateful for all of the support because having a full-time job editing these videos just takes a lot of time. So if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing and liking for more and I'll see you soon.